What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today we are taking a look at a game called Forgotten Minds. And this is a game that I sat on for a little while because this game didn't initially wow me with what it is. Like I played for like an hour and I was like, meh. But like I've dumped three or four hours into it now. And actually as the game starts to expand and grow, I've started to like it more and more. So what is Forgotten Minds? Uh, Forgotten Minds is a game where you are taking a dwarfish war party down into a lost sort of Moria-like area that goblins and orcs had exterminated all of your ancestors in and you're trying to reclaim it for glory and to reestablish dwarfish supremacy because what could be more honorable? Dwarves are, after all, the best race in all of fantasy. If there's a dwarf game, I'm gonna play it because I just can't keep my hand up out of the dwarf cookie jar. And so you will be able to build your own war party with their own classes and their own skills. This game is permadeath, so when your dwarf dies, you are just down a man. It also has progressive elements and roguelite things going on uh, that will allow you to make your war band epically more powerful in between runs. And while a lot of the best stuff is not available in this current demo that's on Steam, you can preview it with a little banner over it that says not yet in game. And it seems like once you get really far in, there start to be some really cool power fantasy items and stuff like that you can unlock. And so once I became aware of all of these various facets and I started to have successful runs, I decided I was going to make a video because it changed my mind. Good for you, Forgotten Minds. I do still have some complaints about the game. I do still have some observations about things I think that would make the game pop a little bit better. I'll nestle those in at the end of the video. Hopefully somebody will timestamp it for you just in case you don't want to watch the full thing. You don't want to hear me blabber for 30 minutes. You just want to hear my tight and concise thoughts. That'll be back there at the end of the video. But the link for you is down below. You can play this demo right now and you can vet my thoughts about it. In fact, I invite you and encourage you to do so. I'm just some guy with no qualifications that ended up way in over his head, basically doing critiques of video games on the internet uh, with no training. I, I don't have any criticism training, no journalism training, no anything else. And so I always recommend people, you know, you can hear the things that I say, but go like vet them for yourself because ultimately I have no qualifications for this job. I'm just some dude on the internet. All right, my other links will also be down there. Discord, Twitch, just in case you wanted to hang out live. Uh, I do ping the Discord whenever I go live, but let's not talk anymore. Let's play the game. New game! So there's a couple aspects that go on into the beginning. And actually, a lot of the interesting stuff in this game happens on the meta play. Uh, so whereas games like, you know, the Dungeon Beneath, the elements that allow you to build your party happen kind of like turn by turn and fight by fight, in this game, all the meta stuff that you're going to be doing with your party building effectively happens at the beginning of the game. And it does give you considerable control over what your strategy is. So right now, I've got a blade amulet. You get three amulets and you get three characters. I've got three amulets. One of them makes my slashing attacks hit really hard. One of them makes me just absolutely dumpster slam goblins. And one of them makes me deal way more damage to orcs. Uh, but there are more interesting things as you get further on into the game. They're not in this demo, but you can see them if you go through all the options. There's stuff that's like when you kill an enemy, you summon, you know, a zombie to your party. Or things like, you know, hitting an enemy causes like a little patch of flames. Uh, there are more interesting options that lean into the more fantasy power uh, things in this game. They're just not in this demo. For right now, for this playthrough, I've chosen my favorite party. The Paladin, the Cleric, and the Knight. Heavy armor all the way. I want a party that clunks. But there are a lot of various class options. I think there's like 10 or 12 from what I've seen so far. Everything from mages to clerics to archers to rangers. I think in the time that I've played, I've unlocked three or four classes. And there's probably like four or five left for me to unlock. And then there's a number that have a banner over them that say not in this demo. And so anyways, lots of options. These characters do level up while you're playing the game. Uh, as they level up, they get randomized perks that allow you to build them in the direction you want them to go, whether it be like regeneration or whether it be cooler spells or more defensive options or more HP. Uh, the game lets you pick and choose. Everybody has a weakness based on their class. You can find items that will negate that weakness, or you can just accept the weakness and you can pick an accessory that allows you to lean into your strengths. But every character starts out with an ability, an attack, an armor, a weapon, and a weakness. And so let's play the game, shall we? So here we are. Uh, the first thing that you're going to notice is apparently these are very these are very jazzy dwarves. For whatever reason, uh, the, it was decided by somebody that jazzy elevator music would play for the duration of the entire game. Uh, this is one of my hugest complaints about the game, and I actually think this will hurt the game. It's very difficult to get immersed in this game because the soundtrack does not match up with what's happening on screen. Like right now, we're supposed to be engaged in this desperate fight of the dwarves in order to reclaim their society from a bunch of greenskins, and yet you've got like Miles Davis in the background just like, 
like it's just it doesn't work it doesn't work at all and it prevents you from having any sense of immersion uh, I'll talk about how I think they can fix that at the end of the video, but for now, let's move forward. At the beginning, you get to deploy to any of these four squares right here. Uh, in the UI, we've got all three of our characters. We've got their attack power. We've got their defense power. All of this stuff is just additive or subtractive, so, like, you deal... 4 plus 14 when he hits somebody with his mace, and when he takes an attack, it reduces the damage by 8. Uh, the little foot is how far they can move. This little arrow is their critical hit chance. Some characters have critical, some characters do not. Uh, aside from that, you've got your equipment. Everybody gets a weapon, an armor, and an accessory. These little guys right here are your action points. They will go up over time. In the beginning of the game, you'll get the wrong idea from this title because it starts to feel like an Advance Wars, like I move and attack, you move and attack. And my initial thought was, I... Advance Wars and Into the Breach are like my least favorite type of strategy games. I like strategy games that have a little bit more to bite down on, more of an asymmetric bent to them. Uh, but as you get further on into this game, that will not be the case. You'll get items, uh, you will get more AP, and it will allow you to do more interesting things while fighting with the enemy. It's just the beginning of the game is kind of underwhelming. Uh, so we've got our spear guy. He can attack out two tiles, and that's exactly what he's going to do. Die, orcs, die, and he got one XP for that kill right there. Our warrior, I'm going to move him up to here, and then I'm going to use his uh, protect ability to eliminate one attack. And then I'm also going to move my my cleric up and do the exact same thing over here. So there we go. We shouldn't take any damage on this turn unless they both focus him. Oh, no, he went after my, he went after my spear guy. All right. Uh, the other interesting thing about this game is that you've got a turn limit, and that turn limit exists for a reason. Now, I know what you're thinking. I thought the exact same thing when I started playing. I thought to myself, Mrah! I hate turn limits. Turn limits are the stupidest thing ever. Uh, I agree. Turn limits are the stupidest thing ever. But you'll be ha you'll be really, really happy to know that the turn limit actually favors you in this game because it's not a tight turn limit. The only time the turn limit has ever mattered for me in the multiple hours that I have played this game was on my first run when I didn't know what I was doing. And I didn't have any power-ups. And I didn't have any level-ups. And I didn't have any meta progression. Uh, you basically die when this turn is up. It summons in like a thousand zombies that you've got to fight. It doesn't matter, though. Uh, once your first run is out of the way, which is more than likely the only run where you're going to run out of time, I have never again run out of time on any level that I wasn't losing anyways. Like, so anytime I ran out of time, I was going to die to the enemy anyways. And so just, you can actually kind of ignore this up here. Now, the enemy's dead, but the level didn't end. What's up with that? Well, that's because we get to mine now, because this is a game about dwarves. And so we want to pick up all these resources and things uh, before we peace on out. And so I'm going to try to mine all this stuff before we run out of time. There we go. We've got some gold right there, and we've got some iron right there. Good stuff. Uh, I'm going to have this guy go open the rare chest on this side by bashing it open. On this side, he'll start cleaving his way in there, and we'll pick up the gold, and we'll pick up the iron. They do need to get a sound effect for when you pick that stuff up. Uh, nice immersive sound. So, like, if you pick up iron, like the clanging of an anvil, or, like, when you pick up gold, the jingling of a coin purse. Or, like, when you pick up a gem, which is a meta currency, it does, like, an ah, You know, like, something like that to kind of draw people into the gameplay is what I was kind of thinking. But for right now, there's not really any sound effects when you do that stuff. Inside the chest, we got a stamina potion. For this party comp, it might be useful, but probably not, in all honesty. Uh, this is the final turn, so we're going to want to get this stuff all hammered out. And we've got every single resource on this map, and we can move on to the next room. Uh... This game does not have any type of map or travel, but I would recommend they add it to increase player agency and also replayability. Uh, so what I would actually like to see is sort of a cloth pixel art map that comes up after you win, and you pick where you want to go in the mines on the map, and where you pick to go determines what the biome looks like, and it determines what enemies you go up against, whether it be like vampire bats, or whether it be against like the undead, or something like that, and then you get like a little, you know, took, 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 took Indiana Jones sort of dotted line that goes as your party travels on there, and then on the in-between there can be events that happen that you have to resolve. Stuff like that, man. That's the bread and butter. That's the salt and pepper right there uh, that makes a game really, really pop, and I think adding something like that would actually help this game sell itself a lot more. For right now, the levels are just procedurally generated and you don't know what you're gonna get. That's, that's pretty much it. Uh, but for now, we're on our next fight. I'm gonna put my spear guy right here. I'm going to put my cleric, like, right there. And I'll put my knight right there. Perfect. Uh, on this side, we're going to cleave on through that boulder right there and kill our first goblin. And I'm actually going to start the mining process here because, like, why not? I may as well. 
Uh, these guys are going to be stuck in the back, and so we should be mostly protected based on the turn order that they picked uh, from any sort of consequences of our deeds. I'm going to move up to here, keep on mining. I'll probably move to here, and then we'll end our turn. He should be able to swoop in and help if this guy gets mobbed. And he did indeed get mobbed. We just got to take our turn in the right order. So we do that right there. We move you over to there. Kill you. And then two swings right there. And that's another goblin down. I think they've done a really good job with this game on the selection of sound effects that do exist. Uh, so I feel like the attacks, they feel solid. They've got just the right amount of screen shake in order to sell the fact that it was a heavy impact. I like the little squishes and the yeah, like noises when people get hit. Uh, it would be cool though, if when the enemies died, they actually had like a death animation or like two or three death animations for each sprite where like if they get killed with like a blunt weapon, their head collapses and they fall over and their body stays there on the ground in a pool of blood. Or if you kill them with a sword, like their head gets lopped off or like another one cleaves them in half from head to toe and they fall over. Uh, little little details like that I think would help sell the combat process a little bit more. But the, the combat and the sound effects that are selected are perfectly serviceable and fine for right now. I don't really have any complaints about them. It looks like we got an armor right there, which is really good. We got a mace right there, which is also really good. I don't know if that's an... It's an exotic mace. Okay. You can swap gear in combat if you want to. Just be forewarned that swapping gear costs you one of your AP. Uh, so, I usually wait for either an endgame period like we're in right now and we're mostly just mining uh, before I use it. Uh, enemy reinforcements will arrive. I don't remember if they arrive on the 8th turn or if they arrive on the ninth turn. Let's find out. Uh, we got one more turn, so I'm glad that I did that. Good. I had like a brain fart right there where I couldn't remember core mechanics of the game. Since we have extra AP available on characters that need it, we'll go ahead and put the heavy mace on him. So he now hits for six instead of hitting for four. So he should do about 22 damage at this point. We've also got a heavy armor right here. I would suggest that the heavy armor go on the cleric because the cleric can heal from anywhere on the map. He has universal range on his heal. So for him, the extra defense matters and the lack of movement matters less. So anyways, that's probably what I would go for right there. Let's go to the next room. All right, so we got our first shop. Uh, we've got a forbidden dangerous blade. We've also got heavy chain mail. Okay, so we've got some options to play around with right here. I'll probably, let's sell the iron mace first. One thing that I have noticed is there's no way to tell what you can sell an item for, like what price you're getting on out. I would recommend that they add that to the preview when you, unless you see it on screen right now, I don't see it on screen, but there should be a preview of how much you get paid. In addition, whenever you pick up iron or gold, uh, having little chunks of iron fall down and then get sucked into this right here and little gold coins fall down and get sucked into this right here and little gemstones that fall down and make a jingling noise and get sucked into there uh, would be a nice little thing to do in order to make the UI feel really, really good. Uh, we'll get the chain mail and we'll get the laser sword. I'm gonna throw the chain mail. That minus five defense is gonna hurt. We're gonna have to find a shield for the knight. Oh, well, he's already got a shield. So he's got eight defense total. Man, he's gonna get crunched. We're gonna have to be really careful with our knight. Uh, so we'll put the chain mail on him. He's gonna get a minus five from this right here, which is which is tough. It's He's definitely not as tanky as he could be, but we'll have to be careful and we'll just kind of maneuver him in a satisfying way. Uh, in addition, we have enough to reroll new items. I can't guarantee that we'll get anything good. Uh, we did not get anything good, so let's just carry on to the next room. Everybody's getting equipped. They're looking a little bit better. We're, we're feeling solid right now as we dive on into kind of like, you know, almost the first boss. Okay. Oh, we're in base contact this time around. Okay, we are fighting the enemy like right now, right now. Gotcha. He's weak to spears, so I'll put the spear guy right there, although I may want to go after that archer. I need somebody to clunk the cleric. That's a fun dwarfish game. It's called Clunk the Cleric. Not everybody knows about it. Uh, we'll probably go you, you. Oh, he's not dead. Lame. Uh, he got one-shotted for 58 damage. That may be the largest single chunk of damage I have ever done in my time in this game. That was an enormous hit. Now, I don't know if it was a crit or not, but boy, howdy, did it hurt. Yeah, these base contact situations always end up a little bit hectic, don't they? Uh, he hit pretty hard. Go ahead and get the double kill right there. We got a level up so he can get a heal spell. 
I'm going to take the heal spell because that's going to help me recuperate after fights a little bit faster. The other option was just like uh, baseline power up uh, to HP. So this guy can get way more attack power or he can get way more defense. I find that attack power is always kind of limited in this game. So I want attack power. I want it hit harder. Oh, it actually didn't give him attack power. It gave him 10% crit. All right. Fair enough. Uh, let's go ahead and start looting. Uh, this situation is basically done. Uh, so we'll move up to here. We'll go ahead and hit those. We'll have you swing on out. You're going to start the long healing process. So let's go ahead and get the spearmen fixed. And then maybe we'll go... Just keep the heals going out. It'll be fine. Hopefully he doesn't one-shot that rock. Perfect. And then swing back into cover. We've got a little bit of time to play around with. Not a lot, but a little. Oh, good. He decided to do exactly what he probably should not have done. Oh, but I can't kill him. All right. Well, just get to the looting then. If you can't do anything else, loot. That's my opinion. We'll end our turn right there. I'm going to try to get him up to that chest and see if maybe there's a healing potion or something inside of it. I still need to get better armor for my spear guy too, but that's kind of life. Go up here, see if there's like... Oh, there's a chain mail in there. Nice, dude. That's actually a really good pickup because I can slap the chainmail on the paladin. Uh, so I'm okay with that. Paladins don't respect you unless when you put armor on them, you slap it real hard. Uh, that's, it's tough to get respect out of a paladin. So you gotta, you gotta show off your martial force. You know what I mean? Well, he got it open. So good for you. I'm gonna use one of your APs to put that armor on. There we go. So you now have chain mails. So we've got everybody on really good damage reduction right now, so long as we can protect the warrior. Uh, next room, we should have a boss coming up, I think. Oh, a blacksmith. I have never seen this guy in all the time that I have played. I have probably been to 10 shops, and I have never seen this guy. Drop a non-improved equipment here to upgrade it. Oh, looky there. Okay. I don't know if that helped me out very much. So his has four and eight, and your has, yours has four and eight? What did improving it do? I can't say that I'm quite sure what improving it actually did. Maybe improving it makes it more sturdy, because your gear can be destroyed in this game. I haven't talked about that yet. Uh, different gears of different materials can be destroyed by different means. Uh, so anything made out of cloth or leather can be burned off you with a fire spell. I haven't tested it yet with lightning spells, if lightning spells can destroy like metal armor. Uh, but I would assume something like that exists, because gear destruction is actually a thing in this game. Uh, I can't sell anything to this guy, unfortunately. We can't afford anything else, so I guess we'll find out. Yeah, I don't exactly know what the improvement did, though. Huh. Well, that's a new room right there that I've never seen before, so I'm just as surprised as you are. Yeah, there's our boss music. We can't kill boss. We can't kill bosses to jazziness. It's just not doable. Okay, it's a new boss that I've never seen, too. The boss is randomized. You never quite know what you get. Uh, all of my previous runs, I got either a berserker or I got a big guy with a tower shield that's hiding behind it, but I've never gotten this guy before, so I guess we'll find out what he does. Tough to say. Uh, let's get the paladin into position. Let's get our cleric into position, I think. And let's get our warrior into position. I want you right there. We're going to go strong opening. He's got an ability called Plague, but I don't know what it does. Blasphemy. When casted, the spell will summon an enemy ghoul in a random tile. I'll take a look at it next turn. Uh, and then you're going to go with a... Oh, it's actually... Okay, so he's got to cast that ability. He didn't get crit from that from that upgrade. He got an ability that he can use. All right. I'm not super interested in moving up my, my least defense guy. We've got plenty of time, so let's just, like, turtle like a bunch of turds right now. Good. Oh, he still caught fire. I was worried about that. Okay. Uh, his round shield can potentially burn off of him from the fire. I was hoping 
that he would actually stop bad things from happening by parrying that attack, but it didn't go that way. All right, let's end our turn. I'm gonna take my lick in here and we'll, we'll figure out what happens. Nice little parry. He fired to the left to light even more people on fire. Not great. You need to die like right now. I hate you, please go away. We gotta level up so we can get more attack power or we can regenerate 10% of our max HP at the beginning of every turn. I want the regeneration because I'm currently burning to death. Also, there's a heal to maybe make you feel a little bit more better. I don't know what this guy's gonna do. And I'm actually a little tiny bit worried about it. He has a freaking flamethrower, is what he's going to do. All right, you pull back because you're almost dead. Spear guy, go ahead and light him up. Go ahead and heal my man over here. You move even further away. I'm just trying to protect him at this point. Okay, so he only gets like one action. Gotcha. Go ahead and get him with the spear then. He's apparently resistant to that particular attack. We don't want to line up on this guy. And everything is on fire right now, which is just like terrible. I'm worried I'm going to lose a dwarf if I get aggressive right here. So I'll probably just end the turn so that I can get another heal on him. Yeah, there's the flamethrower. You survived it, though, my friend. You survived it. Go ahead and put some DPS on him. Oh, he's weak to slashing, though. Okay. Heal up my knight one more time. I think we can soak one more hit. Oh, what did he do? Oh, he put regeneration on himself. Okay. You get him that. Well, you move out of the fire, actually. There we go, and the boss fight is over. The good news here is that they give you tons of time on the boss fights, so we should be able to rest and recuperate a little bit in between conflicts. I don't want to move through the fire if I can help it. At least I'd rather not. I'm having trouble telling what tiles are on fire. I think I can use the preview down there, though, to figure it out. All right, break that open. That's a tower shield, so that's actually pretty good. We'll probably be able to utilize that. Uh, you spread out over to there and see if you can knock over those two ores. You finally got the flames off of him, man. All these heals have basically just been backpedaling, trying to keep the flames from eating his HP. There we go. So we got some goodies. Let's grab the shield. Let's grab the gold. And actually, I'm probably just going to spend like six turns healing, so you don't really need to see this part. Okay, so we're all done. I put the Greatwood Shield on Thadir, and everybody's healed back up to full, so let's get on out of here. They give you a lot of window when it comes to the boss fights to kind of patch yourself up afterwards. And if you don't, you're going to highly regret it. I'll just let you know that. You definitely want to patch yourself up in between fights. Uh, so let's sell the flammable armor right there. So that's been sold. We only have a little bit of gold, but a healing potion is always nice to have. We'll re-roll everything, and we've got a huge black steel mace. I Yeah, I think I'll probably take that. It gives you strike and improved break. Sounds good to me. Throw it on him. Take care of business. The bonks will be dispensed. I actually haven't picked up that many gems on this run. That's what surprises me the most. I've gotten almost no gems this entire time. I guess we're not going to be doing much progression here today. All right, so we're officially fighting orcs. These guys are going to get craftier. They're going to hit a little bit harder. They're going to be a little bit tougher to deal with. So prepare yourself. I'll probably... Yeah, something like that I think works. Go ahead and kill one right at the outset. That guy's strong against perforate, so I need something that clunks if I want to take him out. 34 damage right there, though, which I'll gladly agree to. Our enemies are going to start getting more attacks at this point. Uh, they're going to start having a lot more AP, and they're going to start having a lot more effects that they put on you when they hit you. So things like poison, paralysis, things of that nature. Uh, you go ahead and bonk him one more time, and then probably step forward. You, you, you keep uh, messing around with the stabity wabbities over here. And then you are going to advance, and then you're going to protect your neck, like Wu said. There we go. 
dwarves are actually huge fans of Wu-Tang Clan. You wouldn't know that, but they are. Uh, in this game, even when you parry, you still get affected by the spell effect. So like the secondary effect, I would recommend removing that. I don't know. It's just like one of my own personal... What does that do? Has a chance to break a tile. That's uh, one of my own personal quibbles. Is that I don't I don't like it when like it says that I parried an attack but I still get poisoned. It's one of those little annoyances that I've just I don't know it's never been a thing for me. I block the attack. Why am I taking the effect? You know what I mean? That's that's always been my my rationale towards it. Go ahead and get rid of you. Advance. You grab the gem. I don't really much care about all the crappy stuff laying on the ground. And we are gonna take a sizable amount of damage from these poisons. Luckily, he heals it all off just with his natty regeneration, so it should be okay, hopefully. Go ahead and block. His defense is still terrible compared to everybody else's, though. And I do think we're going to pay for that at some point. Nice block. Take him out. Good stuff. Go ahead and keep on healing through the pain. Grab a little bit of iron, maybe open up the rare chest, and I think uh, it'll be a pretty good day. It looks like we just got a leather armor out of there, so nothing crazy to write home about. I think on the next turn, I can have him grab this gold down here, because the gold is far, far, far more useful. And then with a heal, throw that on the paladin. The paladin's actually looking a little tiny bit scuffied right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with where we're sitting. Let's go to the next room. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. I should have moved him to grab the gold. But anyways, I like the game. I actually think it's a tight, concise game that avoids, so I'm not a fan. I'll tell you that right now. I'm not a fan of games like Advanced Wars or like Into the Breach. Like simple chess-like strategy games don't work for me. So initially, I did not like this game at all when I started playing it because it gave me all those vibes where I was like, oh, okay, so this is like one of those hyper simplistic games where there's not a whole lot going on, but like positioning and your one move really matter. But I am happy to say that it changed my mind and it changed my mind in a good way. And so anyways, this is a game where I think there's a lot of opportunity here to do some really cool stuff. Like this game is basically infinitely expandable it just needs tons of items. It just needs tons of amulets for builds. It just needs tons of classes. But the core idea is solid. That said, uh, let me go ahead and hit you with my thoughts about the game uh, before we conclude for the day. I'll try to get everything tightly and concisely wound out, basically. Has he done anything yet? He has. Okay, so we'll just have him do like a protect. And then we'll talk about what I do and don't like about the game. Actually, I figured I'd bring you back on in so you could see the shop, too. Uh, you can buy amulets in here that will give you buffs on the in-between runs. And then you can also buy new classes on in here. And there seems to be quite a few of them that all do various things in different ways and develop differently as you play the game. Uh, the best one right now is Druid that you can buy, which is crazy expensive. But lots and lots of things to fiddle with. And honestly, that's kind of what sold me on the game. Like, at initial glance, you've got like a weak, underpowered party that's terrible, and it's kind of like a I move, you move, I hit you, you hit me kind of game. But as you start to unlock things, you start to see that through the amulet system and the fact that your equipment has various abilities on it, uh, you can start to make a pretty cool custom battle force of dwarves. And so, congratulate, it's very, very rare that I change my mind about a game after I play it for a little bit, but this one I definitely changed my mind on. It's kind of like the, the dungeon beneath. It's one of those games that it doesn't really look like much, but once you, like, dive on into it and start fiddling with it, you'll find that there's a lot of customizability here. Uh, the problems that I have with the game is that there are some balance things going on, like some of the classes don't feel quite as good as other classes, and some of the enemies definitely seem to punch above their weight bracket, although maybe that's just a progression thing. I haven't gotten far enough and gotten enough upgrades and unlocks and things like that yet to take them down. But still, there's still some balancing to be done, but it's a beta product, so I'm not really going to spend a whole lot of time harping on it. Uh, the music was the big thing for me, though. That jazzy music that they've got going on throughout the entire game. I think that swapping to something a little bit more thematic and a little bit more dark and a little bit more dwarvish uh, would definitely help sell the theme and the ambience of the game a little bit better. When I think dwarves, I don't think uh, something, you know, like Miles Davis. I tend to think things like, you know, throat singing, like Mordruna, basically, like all those Viking folk bands. 
uh, from up in Scandinavia. That's kind of like the, the feeling that I got. And I do think something like that would help sell the game a little bit better story-wise and get you a little bit more immersed. Because ultimately, if you think about it, this is a game about a bunch of young dwarves going down into a mine to reclaim their lost heritage, to basically settle a grudge. And they know that there's a good chance that this is a suicide mission, but they're doing it anyways, like for their people, even though it's kind of a doomed expedition and there, there's sort of almost like a darkness there if you really think about it uh, but anyways there's little things around the game that need to be tooled on up with the ui i do think that the inventory could be a little bit larger because your gear can be destroyed and carrying spares is actually a good idea you just don't really have room to do it and sometimes you just get lit on fire and half your gear burns off and then it's like well damn i don't know how i'm gonna bounce back from this i kind of wonder if the game could have a little bit larger of maps too the game definitely needs some more tile sets that stand out a little bit more a few more doodads and whatnot. I honestly, I think that they bumped it up to like four dwarves and increased the amount of enemies and made the maps larger with like corridors and rooms and things like that. Uh, the game would be a little bit more enjoyable as well. But as it stands right now, it's a simple rapid fire game that drew me in. And honestly, I'm excited to play more. Like I kind of want to see what the 1.0 is going to look like because there's a lot of things that I have not unlocked yet. And so that's really it. The soundtrack could be tooled on up. The UI needs a little bit of work. There's obviously balancing work to be done here. And then, of course, I think that the map could be a little bit larger. And I think the game could actually be scaled up a little bit to increase the tactical viability. Uh, because as it stands right now, like most of the fights, you start out in base contact with the opponent. And it's just a slugfest straight from the start without a whole lot of maneuvering or whatever. So anyways, this is the Forgotten Mines. Not much of a looker, but there is stuff underneath the hood once you start to peek at it. And that surprised me. Uh, so if you wanted to check out the Forgotten Mines, you could play this exact demo right now. It seems like there's a lot of gameplay there. I've played for multiple hours now, and I still haven't unlocked all the stuff in the demo. I'm still seeing new items and new rooms come up. Uh, I think you'll like it if you're into dwarves and you like little rapid-fire strategy games for sure, especially if you like things like the Dungeon Beneath, where there's sort of like a party-building meta underneath that. My name is Flattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we had Forgotten Mines. Tomorrow, we'll be chopping it up with something else. Thank you for spending your time with me and for the luxury of your attention, and I will catch you all later. Bye, folks.